the Rambam truly, he did something which is almost impossible, the Chazonish says. We know the oral Torah, Talmud Bavli, one of the reasons it's called Bavli is Mebubal. You're learning Gemara Erubin, it brings the laws of Korban. You're learning the laws of Korban, it brings the laws of Shabbat. But the Rambam, in his great genius, he made the Talmud like an encyclopedia. So he could, you could find all the halachot. And tonight is his yard site. We also want to dedicate this Tvar Torah for the neshama of your father, Mr. Niku. Yecheskel. Siman Tov Yecheskel. Nisan. Ben Rabbi. Ben Rabbi and Rachamim. Ben Avraham. Moshe Ben Eliyahu. Agdas Debora. So, the Yisak ben Mordechai. God bless all of their soul. The Rambam, one of the most important things he did besides writing the Mishnah Torah, which again, he brought all the halachot in a very encyclopedic and clear and concise way. He wrote the 13 principles of faith. Maran achida ge'un ozenu. The Chidazal writes that it's so important to know the fundamentals of what, what we believe that we, after Tefillah, one should say these 13 principles of faith every day. And you know, it breaks our heart, but a lot of the people, our brothers, Achenu Ashkenazim, or the people that went into the gas chambers, this was such a fundamental thing that they went saying these 13 principles because this is really what it means to be a Jew. So my Rosh Hashiva Zatzal, Rav Weinberg, he was actually very, very into this. He would always have teach it because he would say it's a shame. These are the 13 principles of faith, and a lot of times in yeshivas and in classes it's not talked about. But I wanted to say a chidush. Perhaps that we say, Yesimcha Elohim ke Ephraim chib nasheh. We bless our children to be like the children of Yosef, Ephraim and Menashe. Because Yosef is midat yesod, which means, can you build a building if it doesn't have a strong foundation? When we say our children should be like Ephraim ke Menashe, we're blessing that our children should have a strong emunah. Because really the Rambam's 13 principles of faith is the yesod, is the, is the fundamental of Judaism. So the, the um, we're just going to say it, it's actually, it takes... To say it on a daily basis is such a beautiful thing. And it only takes like, not even a minute, it takes 30 seconds. So, Rav Chaim Ibrisk asked a very important question. What is it that we have 13 principles of faith? Don't we have 613 principles of faith? Right? Shabbat is not in here. Shabbat is not a principle of faith. Where did the Rambam understand to take only these 13 and leave out all the other mitzvot. The Rambam is not, a lot of the Ten Commandments is not in here. A lot of the, what makes something a principle of faith and something not a principle of faith. So if you look at the Rambam, this, what we, what we read is actually a brief version. If you look, the Rambam goes into very deep philosophical reasons and he bends over backwards to prove himself. Because what, is he making a new religion that, what, before the Rambam, there were, these weren't the principles of faith? So the Rambam, if you look over there in Sanhedrin, he goes and spends many pages to prove why this is a principle of faith and something else is not included in these 13. And basically, the way the Rambam and Rav Chaim brings it out clearly is that we know there's the idea of Tinok Shenishba. We know. Uh, unfortunately, almost maybe a million or many, many hundred thousands of Jews in Russia didn't know anything about anything, right? They were like a little child that was kidnapped amongst the non-Jews and he doesn't know. So the way Rav Chaim explained it is, these 13 principles, it doesn't matter. If you don't believe in them, you're not part of Jew Judaism and you don't have a place in Olam Abba. Even if you're a Tinuk Shanishba, which means, if you don't believe that Hashem exists, how are you going to get into heaven? If you, don't, you, you can get into heaven even if you don't believe it. Let's say you were in a place in the world where there, nobody taught you what Shabbat was, right? Are you going to get into heaven? Yes. Because 
Hashem doesn't expect you. you. You could still be part of the club of Judaism and get into the afterworld, the next world, as long as you believe in these 13. That's why Rav Chaim in Yiddish would say, Nebecha Apikairis is Oichet Apikairis, which means if you are a heretic, which means you, you deny the Torah. Anybody that denies any of these 13 principles is denying the Torah. And unfortunately, we're not here to sound fanatical, but this is the Rambam, and it's, today's is your site. The Rambam clearly says if you don't believe in any of these 13, you don't have a place in the next world because you're Apikoris. That's why the Chida, and in all the Sidurim, we read it what? Every day. Because we want to remember that really we do believe with all our, uh, every fiber of our being that every single one of these are self evident truths that chas shalom we never deny. So, what's the 13? The Rambam says like this. The first one is, we say, I believe with a complete faith in the 13 principles of faith. What's the first one? That Hashem is present and supervises. By the way, this is why in the Ten Commandments, it doesn't say, I am Hashem that created the heavens and earth. It says, I am Hashem that took you out of what? Egypt. Why does it say, I am Hashem that took you out of Egypt? Because God that created the world, just like Obama and Trump are going to be playing golf the whole day, Einstein, there's a, there's a group of philosophers, including Albert Einstein, he was debating this throughout his life. There are people that are willing to say, Hashem created the world, but he doesn't give a darn about us. He has much better things to do. Unfortunately, I used to have an eye doctor and he was Baha'i, he was saying the same thing. He says, why do you keep Shabbat? Why, do you, why are you so worried about the details? Hashem has so much great cosmos. He doesn't care about your small actions. But this is not true. That's why in the Ten Commandments, it says, I am Hashem that took you out of Egypt. Our Hashem is not a God that created the world and now abandoned it and is playing golf like Trump and Obama will be. But... This God, He knows our thoughts, He's involved in our lives, and just like when He saw, well, this week and we read in the Parsha, He saw us suffer in Egypt, right? And he, he sent Moshe to save us. Every single thing that happens in the world cannot happen unless Hashem wants it to happen. And always Hashem knows what's going on. He knows our thoughts. And the second principle is what we say every day, Shema Yisrael, Adonai Eloheinu Adonai, Echad. How many gods are there? One. Now the Rambab goes to explain why is this so important. Because he says, why did the Jews create the golden calf? Because the Rambam is so glorious, it's, it's a shame, it's never taught, but you should go look it up if you have it. It's in all the Gemara Sanhedrin, it's in the back of the Gemara. The Rambam explains over there that the reason why there can't be more than one God is because if there's more than one God, one day, it's hard for us to keep Torah, right? To be a Jew, two weeks you could be with your wife, two weeks you can't be with your wife because of the laws of Nida. So, if the, the Rambam explains very rationally. If you ever have more than one God, then there's no God because this, this God A becomes hard for you to observe His laws. So you say, well, there's another option. I could listen to what? The other God, the other God there, there's never going to be a set rule of morality, of, of Torah. Because you could always say, it's hard to keep this God's law, now I made my own law. By the way, that's the reason why people did Avodah Zarah. Whenever it was hard for them to keep the Torah, they made Avodah Zarah and they said, well, this other God doesn't demand anything from me. The third one is that God doesn't have a body and he doesn't have anything resembling a body. So, the Rambam explains very rationally and importantly, why is this such an important thing, fundamental thing? Because the Rambam says, anybody that has a body is limited, right? If I'm here right now, can I be in Jerusalem? Can I be in Iran? Can I be in Singapore? Can I be in China? No. When you have a body, you're limited to the physical. The reason why our God, and this is why we reject Christianity, and it's such a shame, 
Uh, just the other day, I was putting gas in my car. Somebody came and told me, oh, I'm a Jew for Jesus and all this nonsense. But it's a shame because it's so silly. The whole Torah came to show us that the God of Israel, the God of Avram, Yitzhak, and Yaakov, he's everywhere, right? If you give him a body, you, what do you do to him? You limit him. And the whole idea of the Torah, 50 times in the last book of the Torah, it says, don't do Avodah Zarah, don't do idol worship. And when God gave us the Ten Commandments, He said that I have no, I'm like fire, right? Fire is not visible. So our God does not have anything similar to a body or a body. He's the one that created the world, which means there was nobody that existed before who? Before God. Who kadmon? The Chola kadmoni. What's the fifth principle? The second of the Ten Commandments. There's nobody to worship but who? God. But God. Then Avodah Lezulato. The sixth principle is what? Ve'yodeya mahashavot b'nei adam. Again, God knows what we are thinking. Therefore, like Shakespeare said, to thyself be true. You could fake out the entire world, but you could never fake out God. God knows Shavatenu Kabel Ushma Sagatenu Yodea Ta'alumot. God knows everything hidden. God knows why we do something, why we're not doing something. And the seventh principle is that God, we have to believe that Moshe Rabbeinu. Everything he said, Moshe emet ve Torato emet. Right? The eighth principle is that Moshe Rabbeinu is what? The master, the king of all the Nevi'im, of all the prophets. So, why is this so important? Rav Chaim Velazhenar explains in the Nefesh HaChaim because if, if Mashiach, even Mashiach cannot change one law of the Torah. If, if there would be a prophet that would be greater than Moshe, then maybe tomorrow he's going to tell us, don't put tefillin, don't do Shabbat, right? So Moshe Rabbeinu is the greatest of all the prophets. And the ninth principle is that... Hashem knows the thoughts. Yeah, Hashem knows all the thoughts. And the, 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 the ninth one is, is that everything that Moshe Rabbeinu said is from who? From God. Not like Korach. And all those people said that he made it up from himself. The tenth one is that the Torah is never going to change. Chas v'shalom. That's why it breaks my heart to say this, but we really need to save our Iranian brothers and sisters that are making up the largest conservative synagogues. And, you know, the reform, some of them... Anybody that believes that you could change the Torah, God bless my dad's soul. He said the Torah is not like a mini jupe. One day they make the skirt this high, this high, this high. The Torah is like a clock, time. Can you change time? If we decide right now that it's going to be, instead of being 5.30, it's 6.30, can we change it? Can we change? It's, 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 it's the reality of our existence. The Torah never changes. That's why we can never... Unfortunately, that's why Reform and Conservative Judaism is apikorsut, because if you look in the new Torah that they have in the Conservative, they made something to compete with Art Scroll. On the first pages over there, it says that, you know, the Torah can be changed. We're not sure it's all from God. So that, unfortunately, is apikorsut. So it's a big mitzvah to save those people. The, um, the 11th principle of faith is what? That Hakadosh Baruch Hu Manisha Shaimusatov, God punishes the wicked and he gives he gives what? Reward to the Sadiqim. The twelfth one that we need so desperately, because so many people are dying, you know, on average a hundred, two hundred people are passing away from COVID in LA County. It's very scary. We is the coming of Mashiach. And we hope that he comes and saves us because we need him so desperately. Amen. Every second of the day we're um, anticipating and waiting for him. And the last thing is that the dead people will become what? 
alive. That's why every time we go to the, the, the grave site, the cemetery, if you haven't been there in 30 days, you have to make this bracha. And I just want to tell you something beautiful from the Ramchal. Why is this so important that, why is this a fundamental of Judaism that one day the dead people will become alive again? There's, there's many, many different reasons, but one, one of the reasons is, is that since when we're alive in this world, who does the mitzvah? We put tefillin on our arm. So therefore, this arm also becomes eternal. Since we do the mitzvot with our physical body, the physical body also deserves to become alive again. See, that's the whole, that's the whole goal of the Torah. The Torah, the, the goal of the Torah is to make the physical into what? Spiritual. That's why on Shabbat, it's a very physical day. We have good food. But we do it what? For the sake of mitzvah. So only Judaism has this capacity. The Grazal says. No other religion has this capacity to make something that's mundane, but when we do it for mitzvah, it, makes, it uplifts it and makes it what? To holy. That's why this body did the mitzvot, this body becomes holy. This body deserves to become re resurrected and also share in, to, in the world to come. So Hashem should help us. Amen.